gruesome magazine. Hello once again, I am Doc Rodden, and this is Horror News Radio, the official gruesome magazine podcast. And back with me again this week are the scariest, goriest, bloodiest co-host on the net. And tonight we're reviewing Men, <laughs> the 2022 film from Alex Garland. This is going to be fun. All right, joining me tonight is award-winning filmmaker Christopher G. Moore. How you doing, sir? I'm doing good. I'm still collecting my brain matter off the floor after watching this film. <laughs> it blew your mind. Trying to <laughs> pop, piece it back into my head like, what the hell did I just watch? So other than that, I'm doing good. All right. And then joining us is our our newest co-host, uh, the one and only Brian W. Smith. He is part of the film committee of New York City Horror Film Festival. That's a mouthful, but how you doing, Brian? I'm doing well. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for, once again, this week, putting me through another one. <laughs> well, we, welcome we, to we, the we, club. We lined it up. We lined it up. One, two, three. So here you go. All right. Well, we are very proud to welcome our special guest host, writer, director of Vanessa Wright. She's also the founder, co, no, sorry, festival director, right, of yes, the Renegade yes. Film Festival. How are you doing, Vanessa? I am doing great. I'm excited to unpack all of this with you guys tonight. There, there's going to be some unpacking. There's a lot yeah. of unpacking with this movie. Uh, you probably how you define yep. unpacking. Yep. yep. And Fair. Yeah. Don't do this to me. All right. So we <laughs> we got a lot to talk about. You've probably let's make heard Doc as uncomfortable movie. as possible. <laughs> and this movie is I the right movie do to do that with, right? All right. So uh, what we're going to do tonight is we're going to start off giving our first impressions. That will be spoiler free. So it's not going to say a lot, but we will give you our first impressions of the films. And then we're going to dive into it, and there will be spoilers. There have to be, because. That's the only way to talk about this film. And then we're going to wrap things up with our final thoughts, our score, one to five, and our favorite scene. That's going to be fun. Stick around for that. And, of course, we hope you enjoy not only this review, but many others that we have on the site. And if you enjoy it, we hope you hit the like button, the subscribe button, share with a friend, and we'll all be happy. Even Vanessa will be happy, and she doesn't even care. So <laughs> she has no skin in the game, but she'll be happy for us. So... I don't know why I'm picking on you, Vanessa, but I am. Uh, then we'll, <laughs> and of course, we'll hear your comments down below. Uh, let's dive into this. And we're going to put, since I've already started picking on Vanessa, well, we got to do the card first. And then, Vanessa, get ready. I'm going to pick on you first. All right. Okay. Uh, men, available in theaters uh, starting May 20th, 2022. Of course, it's an A24 film. And this one lives up to all that you... Uh, associate with an A24 film. The synopsis is, a young woman goes on a solo vacation to the English countryside following the death of her ex-husband. That's the first five seconds. All right. It's written and directed by Alex Garland. The cast includes the wonderful Jesse Buckley and the incredibly talented Rory Kinnear and Papa Esuido. Susayudo. I'm sorry, Papa. I, I think. It's not close at all. <laughs> But, but do you hear me? But yes, but he was incredible as well. So we will get into all this, and there's more guys there. For as well. but let's let's do this. Let's 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 shut Doc up and no more rambling from me. Vanessa, yes. What was your first impression of Men? There were so many. Like I, I saw this with two other women, actual uh, renegades from the fest, and there was so much going on in my mind when those credits hit that I mean I didn't I didn't want to speak too soon because I was like there's way too much here to have a knee-jerk reaction um and I found it interesting that some of the people there did have immediate very visceral very strong emotional reactions and they were kind of all over the place and the biggest takeaway for me at that moment rather than unpacking what the actual film was dealing with was honestly looking at the power of film itself and how, you know, polarizing this particular movie was and, and seeing all of these different emotions and reactions that were being, you know, evoked. Um, but, you know, my initial takeaway was, and I think we can all agree, the cinematography was absolutely stunning. I mean, it was just like looking at a beautiful moving work of art. I think the performances were phenomenal. 
Um, but this movie had so many layers to <laughs> unpeel and dive into that I didn't have, like, I can't even answer your question easily. Like there, I didn't have a singular reaction. There just, there was a, a lot there. I, I can relate to that. I can relate to that. We'll get into it's tough that to here. articulate. I mean, I, I, you know. It, I agree with you 110%. Uh, Christopher G. Moore, I'm going to let uh, Brian have a moment here. What was your first impression of men? Um, I, I, I definitely agree that it's the cinematography is amazing. I think that's definitely a strong point for it. Um, and I think there's some really strong performances. Uh, uh, definitely, uh, because I think the, the 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 female actress she's in in like almost the majority of the every frame of the movie, and then you have another <laughs> the other actor uh, who's plays without being too spoilerish plays different versions of the men in this community, which you can see in the trailer. It's so in the trailer, so we're not spoiling anything there. Um, and I think it's amazing the different types of performances, the different types of men that he pulls off. So I think I think from an acting perspective, it, there's some some really powerful stuff, and there's some really powerful visuals. It, it this has one of the most shocking things <laughs> I've seen in a very long time, where my my mouth was agape. For, I think for like ten minutes or how long that whole scene went on, I was like, "What is going?" I didn't know I was signing up for this. Um, yeah, but um. But I think, you know, I think I think there's I feel like there's two halves to this. There, there's one half that has that that's almost like a I don't know if morality play is the right word or allegory. It just, but it, it, it you have the aspect of it where it deals with unpacking toxic masculinity, how men treat women, and you see that, and you're almost kind of hit over the head with that by the different representations of the men in the community. And then there's other elements that go off in sort of like the Weirdville, and I think I, I I think I would best compare this movie to Mother when it just goes off the rails and goes into this other sort of like weird uh, metaphorical visual land that can be very confusing because there's not really there's not any explanation for that. There's not any, I, I'm, and I think it's one of those things to where it's kind of sad that if you already know that going into, you, know, you have information about that, like, Oh, I know what that is. And, but I think for most of us, we're kind of left like, okay, what, what is other than just the, the symbolism by certain things and trying to read into it. So it's almost those things where you, you throw all this weird visuals at you. And then it's almost like you, you piece it together and you, maybe you piece it together your own way. And maybe that's what they're wanting. It's like, it's like the, the, the glowing box in Pulp Fiction. You can, put whatever you want inside of it. But I don't know. I felt like there needed to be a little bit more behind some of the other weird stuff. And, and I think it, when it ends, it ends very abruptly for me to where it's like, it, I don't know. It, I, I was, I was like, what? <laughs> and I was people in my theaters like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> um, so I can understand how people will be divided seeing this. They're either going to be, uh, possibly triggered or, or have issues with certain elements of it because it, it definitely throws it out there for you to sort of uh, take in. But there's also some really interesting concepts, you know, that sort of play along. But I, but at the same time, there's also parts where I, f I feel like the 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 motivation of the the main character does things where I got it irritated the whole you know the horror horror movie irritated with characters like why are you just standing there <laughs> why are you doing this <laughs> you know um, so I, I I got irritated so by the motivation so but I don't know I mean I think it's I think it's again like everybody <laughs> probably everybody who's seen it I'm still processing what I saw I, I'm not exactly sure that I fully embrace or like it because like I compared to mother, which I hate the movie mother. Um, I can't say that enough. Um, this one, there's elements I don't like, but there's elements I do like. And so it's, it's like my brain's competing with those two sides trying to figure out, but, uh, but over, overall, I think it's got some interesting ideas, great performances, but it doesn't, it doesn't really, it doesn't really work well when it all comes to the very end, other than just like, I just saw something that's very crazy and shocking. 
Um, so yeah, I, I'm, I'm a little bit divided, but at the same time, I'm not like, I don't, I don't fully embrace how the story plays out. I can follow that too. Brian, sir. I am thrilled to hear what you think. What is your first impression of men? Uh, well, first impression, you know, going in, I obviously I know it's A24, so I kind of know what to expect. Um, uh, but I like the cinematography. I like the direction, uh, some of the sound, sound design, the soundtrack. Uh, so cinematically, I, I put it up there. It's pretty well made. Um, performances are, are really good. Direction, there's some good creepy little genre elements here and there, and then it gets progressively uh, more dread-inducing as it goes. Uh, overall, I feel like they could have shaved off about 10 minutes. Um, I feel like some of those minutes were, uh, truth be told, I might have dozed off on. Um, <laughs> just sort of nodded off. Uh, but, you know, I, 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 I got the gist of it. I, I definitely saw the ending, and, and oh boy, we're going to pack that, unpack that later. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, I mean, and I, I agree with Chris that it, it did remind me of mother, which I, I was fine with. I didn't hate it as much as everyone did. And certainly as much, not as much as Chris, but, um, it, it's one of those films where like mother, where I don't necessarily need to write a, a term paper about a film after I see it. Um, I'll, I'll maybe glance at Google, I'll Google, you know, a couple of Wikipedia entries and see what other people say. And then I'll just move on. Um, and that's kind of how I felt about this one. It was fine. You know, I had my thoughts about it, but I'm, I'm way too old for like writing the college paper. So I'm not going to dive too deep into it. If that's what the filmmaker intended, it's like either you tell me what it's about or whatever, I'll just move on. Uh, that's, that's just my initial take on it. But uh, overall, I thought it was fine. If, you, if you're curious about the film, I recommend it. Um, is it something I would see again uh, if, if, I'm, if I'm in the mood, but I don't necessarily know if I can't really say that now, but it, it, it is what it is. I'm still processing it. I saw it last night, but uh, yeah. just last night. Oh my yeah. god! Like late last yeah. night, the late show. Oh, um, man. <laughs> so yeah. So I'm still. You might still see me like writing notes. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah. It's. I, I would say recommend it if you if you're familiar with Alex Garland's work. Uh, if you like Annihilation or was was even uh, you know intrigued by that or uh, some of his other work. Um, Ex Machina. Awesome. Ex Machina. Yeah. I mean, it's. He's an he's an unusual and interesting filmmaker and interesting writer and creator. So, yeah, it's it's got his stamp all over. But I overall, I'd say yeah, maybe shave about ten minutes, make it a tighter, dread-inducing thriller, and it could have been you know, probably something interesting. But it, it's no, it's not as bad as last week's film. Mm, <laughs> to go oh, right. oh no, 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 we're not naming that movie again. All right, so can't um, start a fire. <laughs> <laughs> oh. God. Mm. All right, so I okay, I saw it Thursday, and yes, I'm still processing it. <laughs> and it, um, I found it in the end kind of frustrating in that respect. You know, I don't know what it wanted to tell me 100%, right? I could. It's very challenging in that way. You know, it wants you, you know, you. it's it's a movie that demands you, your attention, demands your intellect to kind of dive into what it's it's going for. And, um, you know, it has a lot, a lot of technical expertise behind it. I will say that, you know, the like we said, the direction. I love Alex Garland's previous work. Still on the fence on this one, but I like his previous work quite a bit. Um, I really like Jesse Buckley. She's been a, kind of amazing over the past few years, and she is incredible here. Rory Kinnear um, outdoes himself a number of times in this film. <laughs> and, you know, I, most people might remember him as the Frankenstein monster in, um, uh, and I'm going to forget the name. It's um, Penny Dreadful. Penny Dreadful. Thank you. And he was great in that, and he, he's great here too. And uh, it, the cinematography is like you said, exquisite, you know, you're looking at this, but I saw it less like mother and more like the wicker man kind of folk horror kind of stuff. You know, it's very mm -hmm. folk horror. -ish. You know, there was something about this community um, that, you know, is, is off, but is it, and that's what we're trying to figure out. Right. And by the end of it, I got lost in the weeds of the story. Just got lost in the weeds of it all. Um, I was out. There are scenes in this I will never forget. It was <laughs> qu quite shocking in that respect, and I couldn't believe what I was seeing at times. Um, but in the but in the end, I was like, "But what did what, you tell me?" And I I mean, I can kind of project some stuff onto it and kind of get you know the the. 
the themes and the metaphors on the surface are there, but what are we really saying about those themes and metaphors? I'm not entirely certain um, that I got it. Um, and I don't know if I want to see this again to figure it out. I, I don't know if I like this movie. Um, it, it, I was really enjoying it until the end, and then I was like, WTF, I don't know what happened. I, uh, uh, and I kind of stood up hating it. I hate it less every day, mm -hmm. but it, but I still don't like it. So it's, but at the same time, like I admire it. It's, it's, I don't know. It's like, I don't even know how to say it, but anyway, it, there's a lot going on in it. There's a lot to enjoy, but you, as a horror fan, you need to lean into the A24 type films or you're not going to get, you, yeah, this isn't going to be for you. I would say that for sure. I would agree. Yeah. It's, it's a very um, abstract kind of uh, slow burn until it pays off. Yeah. It pays off in, in visually and viscerally in an extraordinary fashion. Story-wise, it it's it takes four or five beers afterwards in a long conversation. But I, I, wish. Think, that, I think that was the intent. Um, being kind of because I really wanted to unpack this and find out. Uh, we had gone to a preview screening, so they sent us the press notes. And honestly, it helped either confirm or clarify some things that I was kind of in the weeds about but i mean garland said that you know he he really wanted this to be a film where the viewers were a participant you know in the narrative and that it was to be some sort of a you know mirror of sorts and that you kind of had to figure out your own ideas about what you thought the film was about and what your takeaway is and it was really dependent on your own perspective watching it which is interesting. I mean, that can be, I think you can kind of use it as an excuse to be like pretentious as hell and just be like, oh, well. Pretentious is a good word that's, for that. Yeah, movie. that's yeah. what I was thinking. But I also think it's it's also kind of interesting to use film in that way and 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 try to create something interactive in a way that's n not traditionally interactive in that way. Right. Yeah, well, and I, I know what the the notes I read those too, and um, I shared them with you. No, I know, you I know. Uh, <laughs> but they they also the he also collaborated with the actors too, and, yeah, and and, and the, what the, how the characters were and their interactions and that kind of stuff. So maybe that played off into how the story laid out, which sometimes can be can be a menace to you know telling a story when you have so many hands in the pot trying to figure stuff out. Yeah. Um, and so maybe that's why it could be a little too long at times and, and how it sort of stretches out. Cause there is those long parts where it's just like, it's slow meandering. And then, mm -hmm. and then later on it turns into one of those sort of crazy thrillers, you know, and then it goes off into sort of crazy society mm -hmm. <laughs> at some yeah. point or, or when, I mean, you, or you Ace Ventura is when nature order, right? calls. Right. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> I, but, I, uh, I was thinking the cow. You're already in Spoilerville, and... by the way. Uh, but, uh, but, yeah, it, 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 but yeah, but it, 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 almost, <laughs> but it almost feels like different movies. Like, nice. like we've stepped, it's almost like the, the end of Pee Wee's, uh, Pee Wee's Big Adventure where we go, we go to different sets and, yeah. and it feels like it becomes different movies at some point. You know, it goes from just your normal sort of like, you know, I'm just visiting this village. And then the next thing is like, oh, well, you know, I'm getting chased by people. and blah, blah. Oh, and now it's got off into artsy fartsy crazyville. Um, uh, so, yeah, yeah. It's, it's 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 made up of so many different parts. And uh, to be honest, I hate it when filmmakers like I just we made it to where you would figure it out. I, I think David Lynch is like that, too. It's like yeah. he won't explain what he means because he <laughs> wants you. to. And it's like, I don't know. I, I'm a filmmaker. I kind of. I kind of want there to be meaning behind it and, and there'd be some kind of specific interpretation. Cause otherwise it's just like, it's just th throwing paint on a wall and, ex and expecting well, people to interpret it a million different like, ways. He didn't hit, he didn't hit control plus S and say, no, 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 no. <laughs> it, it certainly feels like a lot of what he wanted on the screen is left in between the lines of the script somewhere. Yeah. You know, um, I'm not, I, I'm not sure everything is there. Um, I don't know. It's it's it, I. There was. It's I actually liked the first half more than I liked the latter half, which 
I love some of the effects in the latter half, but I like, you know, seeing all these Rory Kinnear characters and, and seeing, okay, it's, it's this representation of a man being this type of pig and this type of, you know, curmudgeon and this type of weirdo and this, you know, it's all these different treatments of, of her. And, but, but at the same time, I'm like, is, is he supposed to represent her dead husband who, why isn't he look like him? And I, I get real confused, you know, when I walked out of the theater. So Well, and I wonder too, if they were archetypes of men and that, that she experienced in her life. Like if mm -hmm. this was her experience, of men rather than putting a blanket on all men to say these are the types of men like i i wonder if they were all just bits and pieces of that character's you know experience and she, you know i because I, I kind of interpreted um that you know basically the entire film was kind of her own journey processing the trauma that she had been through oh yeah and yeah. and i agree with that finding her role in all of it you know and whether or not you know not not necessarily fault but really just finding her role in all of it and so i kind of and again this <laughs> this is me <laughs> viewing my own this looking in the mirror i don't know whatever he wanted us to do but i i kind of interpreted it a little bit more like that like i i felt like it was more her experience maybe with with men um well, that can also play into, you know, how a lot of times people end up, uh, you know, getting in a relationship with someone who's been a representation of all the men in her life. Mm -hmm. She just expects men to be a certain way in her life. I yeah. mean, that could be representative of that, um, which, which, you know, but I did, I did like that, even though in some ways it could feel like, oh, it's kind of like, it's kind of obvious, you know, cause you have all mm -hmm. these different versions of how men react to certain things. Cause there's even the, the guys like, Oh, you know, I don't, I mean, there I've, I've had friends like that where like, I'll kill myself if you leave me type situations. Um, even though there are a lot of times they're the abusive ones, you know, and then all right. of a sudden they get all vulnerable, vulnerable when you try to get away from them, you know? Um, so it, 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 that was kind of interesting. I will say the little kid version was uncanny Valley not good <laughs> and, yeah. it, and it bothered me it's like maybe he just needs to wear the mask the whole time the mask was, was creepy though let's put well, it that I, well i know that but it, it, but then also it's like oh okay, put the mask back on because i just feel like it's uh uh because the, the 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 special effects of making him like a bobblehead kid didn't really work for me no uh, it took me right out of it i was like yeah. what am i looking at what's yeah. happening but i will say that every other character rory plays is he he just i mean it's obviously the same guy but yet it they each look different like you know he can be the guy behind the bar and look totally different than the you know the cop that you know the that's standing on well, the other side well it's interesting you said that cuz you were like obviously they're the same guy it wasn't obvious to me like i oh, i really okay cool i didn't pick up on that like there was something going on but like i didn't pinpoint that i was like Oh, it's supposed to be like they all have the same face because there mm -hmm. were so many like nuanced differences in them that I I kind of almost had to like go back and think about it. I was like, I that one went over my head. <laughs> I did appreciate the early uh, well, Jordan Peele's already coined it, but the nope moment of the the naked man hanging outside her house. I that's I verbally was like, nope, like it was just mm -hmm. creepy. Yeah, that yeah. entire sequence, and I was like waiting for a friend to either notice him or something, and it was just like. They just oh, but he it. kept walking around. Yeah, yeah oh my I God. was like, was... yeah. Well, very it's not an A twenty four film unless you have some creepy naked guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was yeah. Uh, yeah. It's that... so funny that the 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 color of the hair made everything else stand out. I'm just saying. <laughs> it's like even from a distance. Yep, look there it is. Hi, <laughs> how you doing? Because <laughs> it was. It was uh, what, what were we? What are you looking at? You're looking at a friend? Uh, <laughs> probably your kid. I was going to say. Hope it's not the day you got, John. Hey, look, Rory's at the door. This is wearing <laughs> <laughs> uh, But yeah, that was the whole character. That thing was creepy. And standing in the windows when she's walking around with the phone, doing the did tour. Not, did not like. like I mean, I, uh, I liked it as a horror fan because it was it got me to that that point. But I was like, nope, did not like. Creepy, mm -hmm. creepy. <laughs> it was good. Well, though. I mean, those moments I think were the really stood out. I mean, the, the horror moments I think were 
to me were the kind of like the best yeah to where where you would set up this thing and and you and you feel the atmosphere changes and you're like oh crap get out of the situation like when yeah. she's like if she's in that little tunnel you know i like, love the tunnel scene yeah tunnel i scene. love that tunnel mm -hmm. scene it's really Same. well crafted really well shot and just that simple moment of her like you know, yelling and, and, and making her like the reverberation, making like a song out of it, which they yeah. use in the music later on, which mm -hmm. I, I just yeah. adds a sort of creepy level. Mm -hmm. But yeah, there's just moments where just the, there's the creepiness, the, the atmosphere, you know, um, or even just like, oh, that moment where he sticks his hand to that door and <laughs> she sticks a knife. Oh, in my it. God. <laughs> but, like, oh. so, so that that was the point where I went, OK. I know who that's supposed to be because, you know, we saw that one shot of her husband. Yeah. Or, yeah. It was her husband that, you know, when he landed and, the, you know, he, it was just, it was, it was awful. Yeah. Um, and I was like, Oh, I, and, you know, I started well, catching on to where they were going there. And, but I, that was the, what they did with that visually after that was disturbing. Yeah. <laughs> it, like, like, flopped oh my god i was like the, the no. leg that the, whatever they did special effects wise for the broken foot oh my god was that too, yes. really Ugh. well done to where i was yeah. like i did it, i was like by the way it's like dude give the guy a crutch i don't want to i hate seeing him having to try no, the, to and the try crunch to put some, right the crunch put, some, put, it, put weight on that foot i, I like, know hmm. It's like when nails and teeth break i can't, mm -hmm. can't do well, it. And, well then and just also just later on when he's using the the both hands around her neck oh my god oh, that was, that was oh oh my god uh, like, oh dude, yeah that, and so that those moments i think to do to strangle oh, that was well so and good. i think those moments i think is the the horror aspect of it was probably the most impactful for me to where it's just like okay this is great getting good you know uh yeah. and then then you go into like <laughs> then we go into full you know, society mode yeah. <laughs> meets the Pez. thing. Yeah. Or, or, meets or, Pez. <laughs> or as I call it, <laughs> well, I, I, well, I also I call it, it the, way, but it the human, human rushing nesting doll. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I was like, I was like, Oh, we're going here, I guess. And yeah. I, and then it kept going. And it kept going. going. And I was like, for some reason I wasn't surprised. Like, I don't know if it's just from watching films for festivals, but I feel like, yep, just throw this one on the pile. It's one, it's another one of these, well, uh, well, but I, but it was, it was different. You know, I will well, give that. Well, and I, I mean, I guess I don't, I, first of all, I, you, I mean, you really see like a full on vagina, <laughs> full on full screen. And right. we never see really full on births. Well, every once in a while you see in horror, but in this one it was like, oh crap, you know. And then, and I, I'm, I was literally, my mouth was agape for ten minutes. Like, what is? Oh, not. Ooh. That's not the only oh, thing that was oh, agape. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, and then like you know, then the vagina would be like in like on the back, and it would just like, and then it was like whoo, all over the place. Whoo. It was like I like like. Like a magic act, I expected the, you know. I like how uh, visually prepared us with that shot of the, uh, was, it, was it the shot of the cosmos? I guess sort of like reverse, yeah. like, sort of, like right there was. I think he was preparing you for the imagery, and then it just sort of happened. It was like, oh, we're going right there, and I was like, mm -hmm. you know, and and of course both sides of the the altar, the little the where they had the uh, the 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 uh, I guess the well, it's the green it's man. Catholic. Right, right, oh, but it, yeah, the, but the, on the back side it had the the, the, the Sheila and the gig. Which, well, the, the Green Man is sort of represents a lot of that. It was, represents spring. It, it, there. Rem yeah. it re represents male fertility, or it represents the yearning for like nature, new growth, and and so it, there's a lot of sexuality. Sometimes people associate with that. So um, yeah, so but yeah, which is weird because I think like I was like the notes that we read or whatever it talked about like. You know, like for a while there, they were trying to pull all these sort of naked architecture off of things. But in the churches, they still had the, some of those, mm -hmm. you know, the very nudity graphic, and yeah. certain mm -hmm. things. Yeah, they're very kind of graphic because it's, you know, because the pagan and, and Christian sort of meld together a little bit. Mm. It's weird how that's part of that. But yeah, it. it but yeah, mm. I, I think that that mythology, I think I kind of wish that I wish there would have been a little bit more explanation about that as 
ha because it's such an integral part of how the whole ending turns out. I just wish it other than just showing me some statue with the face and well, a agreed. woman pulling her who we are. Need, we need the teacher version of Roy Kinnear. Agreed, so. because I think <laughs> everybody that sees this, unless you absolutely understand or, and are familiar with some of this mythology, like I think they're going to do exactly what we did. You see the movie and you immediately go to Google and you're like, the green man, Sheila Nagik, what what do these things mean? And then there you go, right in the paper, because I had to look it up. Well, I, didn't I, saw, I saw a TikTok video before I saw the movie and there was a girl's like, hey, I saw that picture. It looks like the green man, you know, with mythology is more pagan. I hope it's a part of it. And so I kind of went into it like, oh, I've heard about this. And then yeah. I researched it. But again, you know, it's like it's like uh, like Doc, we saw the Northman, you know, mm -hmm. and so like the Northman, there's a lot of you know, Viking elements. There's a lot of stuff that I don't know about, but you still don't need it to really help follow along the story and, ha and, and the things that happen in it. It's not really an important part of that to where you, you don't, you're going to miss everything. But in this, I feel like it's just a missing piece of the puzzle. It'd be very important to understand that other than just the visually like saying, okay, this associates with, you know, uh, vegetation and rebirth and, uh, I think the real yeah. takeaway after all of this is that folks can go to TikTok, TikTok and, and learn some yes, things. Yeah, you learn some <laughs> You'd be surprised how many things I learn. Oh, well, there's also a lot of BS on there, too. <laughs> uh, a lot of fake news, as they say. But uh, but there there is a lot of false stuff. But there's a lot of cool stuff like that. You were Easter eggs and stuff that I, sometimes I'll pull from that. But yeah, I mean, yeah. but uh, yeah, I, I think that's to me, that's 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 one thing that I that. I give the movie a strike against because uh, I just wish it would be very helpful because not of all of us, like my friend Amanda, who knows all about pagan culture and stuff, she knows about the green man. So she'd go into it probably knowing right off the bat, but a lot yeah. of us are like, what? Um, and then you just think, okay, that's, it's, an, you end up thinking, is it an alien? Is it the thing? <laughs> well, I would. Okay. So there was a lot of time I was thinking like, is that what this town is? Is, and this, and what is this guy? And, and, and I can, like I can pop all the or other Rory Kinnears into place, right? You know, the 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 preacher, the, the, the vicar rather, and you know, the, all the other ones. But the one that comes out of the tunnel, I couldn't figure out who that was supposed to be. You know, I, you guys told me right before the show. I, oh, okay. But I was like, is is that supposed to be like the men she doesn't know that are intimidating? I don't know what's well, going on. If we think about it, like you know going back to you saying like what was this town and could it have been did were there any actual outside witnesses to her having interactions with these men because most of them she was seeing them one-on-one -on -one. so then you have to there's one them, like there's one outside interaction it's the female cop right but everyone else so then like were these real men in this town or was that whole thing kind of just a projection of her own well, well you know, so so the there's a male cop. There's a male cop, right? The naked man was taken, and the male cop looked like him. But the male cop just, was him, right? But was that was that just her? Yeah. So I'm trying to figure out like, there was well, no you, other, like, you can't take it literally, right? You're just not literal. So. To her interactions with them, like she had mm -hmm. all of these kind of isolated interactions with them. So it did make me wonder whether or not. <coughs> Excuse me, I've I've inhaled my own saliva. <laughs> oh, nice. I'm classy. Um, you know, whether or not those interactions were really happening, if it was something more in her head. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Do we, do, could we interpret the ending like her her final shot of being happy to see her friend who is revealed to be pregnant, <laughs> that she's this is the first time she's seeing someone outside of all the men, that she's actually seeing someone that she recognizes that's real or I, I don't I mean, she's covered so. in blood i don't know i don't know what the interpretation of well, there's, because there is a blood trail goes there's a blood the trail house, yeah right, right. So, so I, I, but i don't so someone's it, in there whose blood is it right yeah. unless she got injured when she crashed her car yeah, so it's implied uh, that she crashed the car yeah. maybe she started her period <laughs> I don't think oh. you can do it like that. Only you can. I, you can't convince me. Only you, you can't can convince me. Evidence. Evidence. No, that's, I'm not going to say that. Did you see my face? I was like, that's that's plausible. No, I don't know. It, I don't know. Well, I guess. I'm just a big dumb male. Well, I, I, I don't think. 
I, I don't think Alex Garland meant that to be the case. Cause then that no, was I pretty, don't think so either. Because you have a guy who's <laughs> writing and directing it. I think that when it comes down like, oh, she's just crazy because she's... <laughs> Well, then you can even take it further. Like, did she maybe snap after going through this trauma? And, you know, maybe, you know, who knows what she did? Did she kill somebody? (laughs) Right. Well, and I think that's. It's very open ended. Well, yeah. And I think I think it's I think, again, it's supposed to be like this character's finally had this epiphany about her life and she's come to this conclusion and that's fine. But. I want to. I want more of an inclusion on my end too, as if as a <laughs> watcher, as an audience member, right, uh, right. as to what just transpired. Because you know, if if, if we if we had a camera go through the house and she's, you know, killed some random <laughs> homeless person, or 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 you know, or maybe I don't know. I I'd, I'd like to get a little bit more information because it's like to me, I don't think I think the story's not resolved in my mind because. Yeah, I, I, we We're, all know that's what she's trying to get to, but I want to know, like, is this? I, I don't know. It, it all falls into that sort of inception thing. Is it real? I, is I, it I, fake? Exactly. As soon as that guy shows up with all the leaves stuck in his face and blows the dandelions in her, and she reacts like she just got hit with magic potion, then you don't know. Then everything from that point to when the her friend shows up, you don't know how much of that is real, or right. you know, is actually interactions with physical people like i i believe like everybody up until then she actually interacted with and she just put their faces you know on them mm-hmm. but after but from that moment on i don't know if i know what the hell at that i started point, wondering right? if it was like an evolution i know it was maybe the, the interpretation of men, whether it was men through her life or experiences she's had through men you know all through her life like maybe the naked man was like supposed to be a child but uh, and then she sees the adolescent at the church who's kind of like a dick to her and then there's the vicar and there's mm-hmm. all these different evolutions and then i guess it goes back to the cycle of this sort of tree-like creature starting life over i i was i, I was half asleep so i was i'm just trying to interpret what i what i saw <laughs> yeah um, I'm, I'm puzzled by you know because i think that's sense, you know but that's right. where I agree with like how it feels like it does feel like mother, where it's like I feel like the metaphors and everything are just right there and they're not really as deep as the filmmaker wants them to be. And you know, you just enjoy the cinematic quality of it. But uh, I don't, at the same time, I don't want to hurt my brain over it because I don't think right. it's probably not that deep, you know. <laughs> or maybe, yeah, this- uh, you know, what if the director of Titan wrote and directed this? If this would be a little bit more interesting or a little bit more, you know. Wow, I don't, I don't, I don't even know where to go with that. I That's just, amazing. I just want, her, I just want, her to her. <laughs> I, I want her to make all the movies. Um, uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, it was, it was, it was, just, it was interesting. I, I, I know it's a particular pers- perspective we're seeing here, but I feel like, as with Mother, I feel like if we had a different perspective, uh, you mm-hmm. know, that related more to the character, I think then we, we'd probably get more a visceral experience. But you know, mm-hmm. well, I, I, I don't think anybody else other than jesse buckley could bring the range of emotions and the subtle changes between them oh she brought um, it yeah she's, she's it was a, you know the, the the anguish the the i felt uncomfortable there oh my the argument scene oh, i was like oh my god many. there was you know yeah oh, oh my god yeah the flashbacks and yeah and when they're you know she talks about it later to the vicar but you know when he's falling there's a moment that you know, uh, uh, Alex Garland, make sure we see where it looks like they see each other. Mm-hmm. Right. And then she brings that back up and we're like, oh yeah, it did. I, you know, and that's, I think that might circle around and, and talk about like, we're supposed to be like right beside or behind her eyes all this time. Right. You know, um, we're supposed to be that her, we're supposed to be her. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, or maybe some of the audience is supposed to be her. I'm not really sure if he's directing this, you know, as a, it, on the surface, it feels like it's very much a statement about how women are treated, right? On the very surface. But I think it's there's a lot more going on below it. And I get lost in that. I start quick sanding quickly. Yeah. I've redone it, but yeah, yeah that happens. Uh, let's go ahead and wrap this up. Let's give our final thoughts, our score, <laughs> one to five, and our favorite scene. Vanessa, I'm going to let you go second so you don't have to. <laughs> dude, I'm not going to. I usually follow the same order, but I'm going to let Christopher go first. What is your final impression, your final thoughts, your score, and your favorite scene? Um, yeah. Um, this is, <laughs> this is uh, uh, 
literally the definition of a uh, pardon my French mind fuck. Uh, it's, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it, 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 it's got, it's got, it's got some, it's got some good elements. It's got some important themes that we're constantly dealing with today. And we've always kind of dealt with in some way or fashion. Um, and it's definitely in your face when it comes to showing how the different variations of how men treat women horribly um, and how their mindsets are kind of screwed up and how they deal with certain situations and they don't take women seriously. And, and so, and then you also have the element of trauma and how this lady's having to deal with this and how she's been gaslit and all these different things in her life and just trying to come to terms with that and trying to grow as a person, you know? So there's a lot of those type of things. And then, but then we definitely go off into sort of, uh, metaphorville and we take that trip <laughs> and a, on a crazy roller coaster through a vagina and it and uh it it, it 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 kind of goes off the rails but in kind of sort of a crazy bat shit did i just see that um mm -hmm. and uh and I, I i will say that that's memorable and if i were a filmmaker if i could just have that one moment that makes people come out of there like i'm never gonna forget the person that just kept giving birth to people out his vagina hole. So, um, <laughs> you can put, put that on the Blu-ray. Yep. Exactly. Like Garland. Um, I think that should be the quote on the front of the, of, um, <laughs> this, yes. this is why I'll never become a legit movie reviewer. Cause I, don't, I do not have a way with words that people. Would anyway. No, it comes um, right out of the vagina hole. It, Christopher G. It Moore. Does. <laughs> it's the way it goes. It's the way, the way the cookie crumbles. Um, <laughs> What? <laughs> anyway, uh, I, yeah, I, I think I'll, 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 I'll be processing this movie until the grave. I'll be in my dying moments, like, oh, man. Uh, um, and and so I, I, I think it's one of these things where you're going to forever, probably never have any kind of full concept of what this movie is trying to say, other than just those elements that are right on the, the surface. Um. As for a rating, ah, <laughs> uh, um, well, um, I, you know what, I, I, I usually will give ratings even if the content is isn't the greatest or doesn't flow right. I still like the visual aspects of it, so I'll, I'll give it a, I'll give it a two point seven five. You know, a little, oh. little bit above middle. Oh. That's what we're going into. <laughs> No, actually three. Let's do it three. Okay. I was gonna say right. three. Maybe give it I want pie. to pie. Just give it pie. Huh? <laughs> Two four one five. Two four one four. That. <laughs> That's <laughs> there's a joke there. I'm not going there. There is um, a joke there, and I'm dang. Uh... <laughs> That's the beauty. <laughs> um but yeah, I'll, I'll give it a three. Yeah, I, I think three is a good a good uh, number um, for this. It, it, I think visually, cinematography wise, it's it's really got some really beautiful minds. Sound design is great too. There's yes. some really great to sound design mm -hmm. used, especially the tunnel part, and then also the music how it's integrated. So the visuals, I, I think, are, are definitely the standout of this film. I think the way the story kind of devolve, evolves into different things. I like that. No, pardon the pun. Um, <laughs> it. Uh, uh, it, 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 it yeah it's a little bit kind can be a little bit scattered and trying to but again i guess that's the whole point of it is just to keep you guessing and, and figure it out on your own make you give us own. a favorite scene um what is my favorite scene <laughs> i know what i could say but that would be weird um well let's hmm. hear it <laughs> weird is good this is the right movie yeah. for weird i'll say the um speak your truth man the the vagina upchuck scene. The, the oh, 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 people no, coming, <laughs> people coming out of person after per. You know, yeah. I, I think, I think, um, I think that's the main thing that I can't get out of my head. For not, <laughs> which is not a good thing. It's like, oh, no, no, that's gonna be stuck. <laughs> I, I, I think, um, yeah, I just, I don't think I've ever, will ever say anything like that. Um, so I, I give them major props for creating a sort of a over the top shocking memorable scene mm -hmm. um that i think you know any filmmaker would probably love to have that scene that could be that impactful regardless of people that might uh <laughs> walk out 
There might be because people because of it, which I've heard there have been people walked out. Oh, really? Of because nice. of that, yeah. All right, so. Vanessa, you're up next. Your final thoughts, your score one to five, and your favorite so, song. Final thoughts. Um, there's just so much there. I mean, I don't know that I can sum it up in a, in a quick, easy, uh, summary. You know, I can appreciate the film as the piece of art that it is. Um, I don't know that it's necessarily a film I'm going to rush out to see again. I think one viewing is enough, but interestingly enough, I can't stop thinking about it. Like I have been thinking about this movie since I saw it. And so there's something kind of genius to how out there it was. It absolutely gets under your skin. It can definitely be triggering depending on what you take from it or how you perceive it. I mean, there's a lot of themes of, you know, kind of this conditioned thinking about the relationship between men and women and, you know, kind of normalizing some of this manipulative and gaslighting behavior um but again to say that this this is this is one story and kind of one perspective of all of that um i think as far as just te technical filmmaking stuff goes i mean i agree with chris like it's so beautiful to look at I think the sound design is genius. I absolutely love the creative things they did to really set the tone and the atmosphere. Um, you do kind of forget you're, you know, in a movie theater watching a movie. Like it's completely, I was completely immersed in this very strange world, um, you know, until it was over and it was like, oh, I'm back. What did I just see? I, I love um, that. That's an interesting way to say that. Yeah. Like it, it kind of, it almost is like, I felt like maybe I was holding my breath the whole time. Um, and then let's see, favorite scene. Um, I absolutely loved the tunnel scene, but I feel like that's an easy one to pick. Cause I think we can all agree that was just, stunning and it was really cool what they were doing there um so if but the other one i guess that kind of got me and i think it wasn't so much a scene as just the if i loved that split hand strangulation oh like my that god that was really i was oh. like oh, oh, god. oh man um, it felt otherworldly, didn't it? At that point, yeah. I felt like I could feel it, like it was just mm -hmm. that effective. Um, and you know, regardless of um, my interpretation of what I thought it was, I think just from a pure like, let's just look at all of the different boxes this thing's checked. I I'm I'm going to give it a four okay. out of five. I don't think it's the best film I've ever seen, but. It had so many really amazing things about it. Um, and I know that, I, you know, I've got friends who saw this that hated it and it really affected them. And this is not to diminish what the, the, the film will make you feel. I just right. think that it's a powerful film. Yeah, it is visually and emotionally. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Brian, how you doing, sir? I'm, I'm good. I'm doing well. And uh, this conversation has been great and enlightening and it may compel me to want to see the film again not in a the theater but when it's available uh I'm, I'm with vanessa on this i i i'll just outright i'll give it a four um just for the technical aspects the cinematic quality the production design cinematography all that sort of the sound design um i love the opening song during the driving i like the, the music that was used um i think my i'd say my favorite my favorite scene uh is the tunnel scene because i yeah. i like how it evolved. I liked the evolution of the, the the song, which I didn't anticipate. And then I was mm -hmm. like, oh, I, I want this on the soundtrack. I hope it's on the soundtrack. Um, so yeah, it's it's those elements that I really appreciated. I think uh, filmmakers, or even if, if you're a fan of Alex Garland's work, you should check it out. You may may or may not like it, but it's it's in the evolution of his of his body of work. And I think filmmakers should see it just because it's it's you know, non-Marvel, it's something different and mm -hmm. maybe you'll get inspired by it or yeah. triggered by it's it. It's about as far away from Marvel. Yeah, yeah, I, you know, I think, I think it's, it is, I, I don't want to say, it seemed like earlier where I was like against, you know, sort of artsy fartsy pretentious films, make them, make them all you want. Um, it's up to us as, you know, the public to whether we 
how we interpret them, how we like them. But I think it's important to see all different types of films. And, and I think this would, would inspire, you know, students and filmmakers, uh, you know, just to think outside the box and come up with some, I mean, you're, you're not going to, probably not going to come up with anything as crazy as this. I don't know. We haven't seen the new Cronenberg yet, but, um, you know, I think it's an exciting time for filmmakers to create different types of films that sort of challenge the norms and, and I'm, I'm, I'm here for it. So yeah, go to four title scenes, my favorite. And yeah, I'd, I'd recommend just seeing it at least once or yeah, seeing I his am, other films as well. Right. And yeah. I'm incredibly grateful that a 24 is allowing us to see these films in the theater mm -hmm. and, and they're doing, and they're successful, right? Um, at least with most of their films are successful. And I think this one will be in its own scope. Right. So I, I really appreciate that. And and for your tunnel scene, I just wanted to add on to that, that I loved her raw emotion, Jesse Buckley's emotion in that scene, because it was, there's all this stuff going on from the, just the joy of hearing her, you know, the, sa the, the sound come back, the echoes, and then transitioning later as the fear, as the man steps into, you know, men step into the end of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. um, just wonderful, wonderful. Can we interpret the like the birthing scene as like uh, I don't know I, again I didn't want to get too deep into it but uh, is it uh, is it like you know taking the the beauty of childbirth and you know of nature and sort of men corrupting it yet again is that the, is that sort of what you think he's going with or and making it like sort of I a think that's a fair assessment. Uh, that's that's your thesis. Go for it. Well, that was, we'll that was, it's, yeah. it's, it's, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I I felt it was just. Uh, I feel like it. I, to me, it was more like men sort of never change. They're just mm. born again and they act the same way towards women. I, for me, I felt it was more of a lineage type thing than just it. Mm. But again, that's again, that's probably a million different. I think you're both right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, Garland I, probably he's he will love this conversation because we're there are so many it. different perspectives. So I know. I know. I know. We're doing we're doing right. the thesis anyway. Go ahead. Oh, uh, we are right here right now live. All right. So this this movie I found. I don't know. It, I'm frustrated by it because on one hand, I admire the hell out of it, right? I admire the beauty of it. I admire the the boldness of it. It's a very bold film. I admire the acting, the cinematography, the sound design, the music, yeah, everything about it. As a story, I kind of hate it. I'm in that thing where it really kind of like let me down mm -hmm. with the finale. Um, I was really on board with a lot of it, except the resolution. And I'm not sure, and I don't know if that's where everybody else is kind of losing it or if they've already lost it because there, there's long bits at the beginning where, you know, if, if it doesn't engage you right away, that you're going to be so uncomfortable in your seat, you know, wanting to- Unless look they at, recline and then you can take yeah, it Yeah, unless, because you, you're going to want to look at your phone, you're going to want to do stuff. But if it grabs you, the, the, the first hour, you're just, even before it goes- batch it you're like just soaking it all in there's the the way it's structured the way we get the flashbacks in you know as they grow as the story goes on as she starts encountering more and more of these men and the story her backstory grows um it's just it's yeah it was really fascinating and then it went you know balls out and that was fine literally and figuratively and that was all good and then once the her friend appears and and I'm like, oh, but why? <laughs> it just left me a, you know, like wondering like, but what what are you what are you telling me? What are you saying? What is this? I need more. You got to finish your, your. It's like mid sentence and it cuts you know to it being over. I'm like, but so I I was very frustrated by that and it kind of upended everything. Um, I. <sighs> Will I ever see this movie again? I'm, I can't say that I will aggressively go out to see it again. Um, if I do see it again, it will be circumstance like it's there, and I'm, you know, a curiosity rise or, um, you know, the next Alex Garland film comes out, and I go, okay, let's go and watch those other three, right? And and the the <laughs> that this movie compared to some of those other ones makes. Annihilation more accessible <laughs> than this one is kind of a thing, you know, because his other films are out there too, but not like this. This is, while this is his style, this is, this is very much an evolution, even from those two films. Uh, and I'm not familiar with any of his other work outside of those two films, but, and I, 
Ex Machina, or ex, yeah, Ex Machina. I really love the performances, and again, he gets these great actors to do great performances. And then, um, yeah, well, anyway, I'm not gonna talk about this film. This film, holy crap, I'm frustrated with it. I'm of two minds, and I kind of want to love it, but I kind of want to, I kind of hate it, and it makes it very difficult. There, this happens to me at least once every year, and it's happened since I started this back in. In 2010 drive is one of the early ones that really like oh, man that was that was kind of a cool movie but i kind of hate it <laughs> you know and there's there's always one every year that is in that where i know i should love this movie this movie i should champion but i just can't fully get on board and that's where i am with this one and technically it's a four movie wise it's almost a one um for me so i'm really don't know where to go and I don't know if I'll ever know mm -hmm. where to go with this. This one's, this one's always going to frustrate me because there's scenes in here that when I reflect back on them, um, and some of them are visceral, like, you know, the birthing scene, if you will, or just the guy standing at the edge of the barn at the, the other side of the field, right? And what that implies, you know, just that one scene with him just simply just standing there, crazy butt naked. There's so much there. Right. There's so much. It feels this. very threatening. Right. And it's just a simple, you know, by itself, it's a simple scene. Right. But there's this whole thing before it. And then it gets it takes that un, uneasiness that we've. Yeah. Because right? all of a sudden you're no longer safe. Right. And then it compounds that when he shows up outside the house. Mm -hmm. um, so it it's very effective in that. And I kind of love it for that. Urgh! But then the ending. So uh, my favorite scene because I need to shut up now, is I'm going to go with the hand through the mail slot thing. Oh, yeah. Um, because that was, it was, it, it, was a, it was a lot. It was a lot to watch. I mean, it gets worse. But at that time, it really wasn't, I mean, other than the one shot of, you know, of her husband, there really wasn't any gore, right? You know, no. there's, um, but when that happens, it's just so, you know, it, we didn't know she would go that far. Right. We didn't know yet. Right. And then, oh man. And then what, if, as soon as you, if, whenever you decide that you're going to put together what that represents with her backstory, it, it just has all this weight and meaning that almost sings. Um, it's interesting. So God bless it. I just want to give this movie a four. It's <laughs> quite the difference. But I don't like it. It's a four, but I don't. How can I say it's a four and say I don't like it? But that's what I'm saying. How does that happen? What, Unpack that for me. The, would you say the good outweighs the bad? Would you say it's an important? I give it a four because it's important for I think people to see. Well, I, I think as 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 a as a um, I don't as know. a movie as a movie it it's there right technically what it achieves what it you know you know the emotions you feel the how you get involved with it. But as a story, as a narrative, I don't think it it gets there. And so the narrative that that's it's like, yeah, like two thirds of a script, but it's almost there. But it's, well, um, it's an unfinished sentence, right? right it's like right. Um, but that's a lot of movies I'm seeing lately. But you know, I have to wonder if that was a little bit <laughs> intentional as well, because because of the trauma she experiences which in itself was an unfinished sentence like because she didn't know right did he jump right. did he, he fall suicide they have that huge fight she gets so angry that she kicks him out and there's no resolution with them and she never knows did he kill himself did he slip and fall so her whole experience in itself was this unfinished mm -hmm. sentence and so I feel like the journey of her kind of processing that she's never going to get that closure. So we, as the audience really aren't going to get it either. Yeah. That's well said. Um, I went a little deep. <laughs> you did. And, and you're, and you're absolutely right. I can't wait to hear uh, everybody's thoughts on this. Please leave us some comments down below. Yeah. On both sides, please. Uh, you know, it, I, I want to hear all thoughts pros and cons on this one, because it, I, I, I'm with Christopher. I don't know. I'll probably go to my grave trying to figure this movie out. Well, you know, and it's like, I feel, I, I think I feel the same way that you do. I, you know, I kind of, maybe I should give the rating higher because there's elements that work, 
But then there's times where I look at it and I feel like it's so, I think parts of it are so on the nose when it comes to, there's nothing subtle <laughs> with certain parts of it. Some of it, yeah. To where it feels like, okay, you know, mm -hmm. I feel like I shouldn't give you an award but because it's so like right there. So it's, it, it's, yeah, I think it's up and down, but yeah, it's one of those things that I think it's, I think it's one of those things where everybody needs to make their own opinion on it, see it. Although I think some people might be extremely pissed or they might be, you know, go, I've, I've seen people on my Facebook. It's been so crazy. Like, oh my mm -hmm. God, this movie's horrible. And I see other people, man, this is the most brilliant thing I've seen in a long time. Go see it. And I was I've like, seen that. I've, I've seen that too. Don't, people... don't, don't give people faults. No, no, no. <laughs> I mean, I get it. I get it with people that, I mean, I've seen people on the social that come out and just absolutely love this movie. I just saw the greatest movie, you know, kind of thing. And, and they're not wrong. I can see where anybody can come into this and think it's the best thing ever. And I can also see where they come out saying, you know, F this, right. It's because I kind of, that's uh, what well, I mean. Again, I think that leans into the whole, like, what's your own personal experience in this life? I mean, that's how, we view things so you know depending on what experiences you've had it's going to land very differently with different people and and i, I it, if you're questioning whether this is actually a horror film yes this yes. is most definitely 100%. horror film and Whoa. it is it's it, there's it, elements it, that are more horror film than some horror films i mean the, the, that yep. that the the you know the whole splitting hand thing the camera does not jump away yep. you see it and it's like even i was like oh god <laughs> but, maybe we should cut away <laughs> i'm getting uh, uncomfortable yeah, yeah I, mean, it, that's, that's I, I like that it did that i like that it 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 leaned into those things and made it so unsettling and uncomfortable. And then it left the mark you know you had the blood around her neck for the rest of the and it, so it never went away even though it was yeah. gone mm -hmm. so and and then you were right you know vanessa like what you said you know like that uneasiness that we get in the field and then later in the you know around the house brian you were seconding this as well you know that is horror too i mean yeah. we're you know the, the other ones are more like visceral monster society kind of horror but that was horror too that that was so creepy so that's when i first felt i don't know scared's a little too strong a word but uneasy doesn't feel strong enough right it's somewhere in between that it's when it you get nervous when you get nervous for the characters. Yes, 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 you did. You felt like something you felt she was in danger. And we were so close to her character, you know, because we're living through her that you know we are too, right? So that's mm -hmm. that's so you gotta give this damn thing a four. I, I hate myself. I don't want to give it a four. <laughs> I mean, please don't lose sleep over it. <laughs> I wanted to give that I literally want to come in here and say, that's that sucks, and I give it a one, and I can't do it. It's it's a four. It's but no I, Morpheus, so it's not Morpheus. everybody should see it though. I mean, I would definitely still, regardless of what you walk away with and if you like it or not, I would be like, go and see it because it's unlike anything you're gonna see anywhere. Ever. 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 Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, there you go. There's our review for men. It's out in theaters now from 824. Check it out. Uh, would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Vanessa, so thank you so much for joining us. This was a Thank blast. Thank you. This was amazing. I love you guys. Please have me back. <laughs> we, I will have to we'll figure that out. Back. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. We'll we'll make it a, a much worse film. How's that? We're, we're gonna go into the <laughs> towels of later. cinema Don't. hell and bring something out we, for you. To we watch. want people to want to come back to the podcast. <laughs> We're, no, already, we got, we're already close to driving Brian away. We got a challenge. We we all, challenged us, this yes. gauntlet of horrible movies. I know. Brian last week was like, I'm never coming back. Um, no, but uh, Brian, Christopher, of course, thank you for joining me. Uh, it's no been problem. a blast. It's uh, always, always fun to talk with people that like movies and have different opinions on it. So. And Actually, I have a better feeling about this movie now that we've talked about it. Now that I've been able to talk about it with other people and not just yeah. internalize it and try to figure it out. I... I no, and I, like I, I, I do too, and I hate you. I don't love it, but I'll. <laughs> I kind of. I do. Whenever you I go don't. through a traumatic experience, it helps if you talk. About it. <laughs> well, that's true. I but mean, this I, movie was traumatic. If, oh anything, my God. if anything, I want to. I don't want to have to buy the Blu-ray, but I, I'd want somebody who has a Blu-ray that I can borrow so I can watch his special right. features. I just pray to God nobody cosplays as that character with the split arm. I just oh, please don't. Or just <laughs> or, or, or just any. the post. Or post, any of the guys. Or, the poster oh, with the guy with men on his <laughs> That would be funny. Oh, yes. the, the vagina part? 
No, she was uh, doing. She was doing. I that. was doing. <laughs> I like no, oh. no, no, Chris. No. I have an idea for Dragon Con. Oh, and, and just <laughs> we're gonna get kicked off. out of uh, oh, Atlanta yeah. hotels with that. Yeah, that'd be <laughs> You'll funny. You'll be the picker, and I'll come out from underneath your little dress. No, stop. <laughs> uh, that. <laughs> I've done something. I should go to bed. <laughs> oh, we're all we're spent. All right, guys. Let's say good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>